Hi, I'm Ruslan and welcome to Basics of Light Mapping in Unity. In this video we will explore key components of creating high quality lighting for your Unity games. This video is brought to you by Mixel Studio. Mixel is a great solution for boosting your game development. When you're creating a game on Unity or Unreal Engine and you need quality asset that meets industry standards and provides flexibility and modularity, we've got you covered. Thousands of 3D models, more than 200 of quality assets for your games and simulations. There is something for absolutely everyone and anyone here. And if you're in doubt, you can check the asset before buying it at mixel.each.io. To instantly gain access to professional level game assets, check out links in the description. When lightning scenes in Unity, we have the option of setting our lights to real-time, baked or mixed. Lights can be set to one of the three options on a per light basis. So, essentially, we can have a scene where some of our lightning data will be baked, some will be read in real-time and some will be used both baked and real-time data. Real-time lightning is lightning that isn't calculated until runtime. This is something to keep in mind, especially when creating games for lower-end devices, because the inclusion of the real-time lights comes at the performance cost. Baked lights are lights that are pre-calculated with the lightning data stored in a texture inside your game. The lightning texture is then overlaid with the textures and materials of the assets found in your scene. Since much of the data is already calculated and doesn't have to be computed during runtime, so for lower end platforms, exclusively using baked lights will be more performance friendly. Mixed lightning is lightning that relies on a combination of both real time and baked lightning. In Unity, we have four main light types, with each having various settings and attributes. First, we have directional light, emit even and consistent lightning across the entire scene. Usually, these lights are used to simulate sunlight or a far distant light source. Next, point lights. They are location specific and emit light in all directions from the center equally, frequently used for simulating flashes and light bulbs. Spotlights. The spotlights emits light on an area over a range and angle. This type of light is normally used for flashlights or searchlights. And finally, the area lights. Area lights are defined by its shape. Similar to a spotlight, area lights emit light in a forward direction with a uniform linear falloff based on its range value. Light parameters. Range determines how far the light emitted from the center of the object. Color adjusts the color our light appears as well as the color of the light rays it casts. Mode allows you to specify light mode. Intensity is the value that sets the brightness of the light. Indirect multiplier controls the amount of ambient light being cast into our scene. Shadow type Specify whether we want our light to cast hard, soft or no shadows. Render mode specifies the rendering priority of the selected light. Culling mask allows us to selectively exclude groups of objects from being affected by the light. That's unity for main light types. But what if you want to have an object or piece of geometry lit up by emissive properties? Let's take a look at the lamps here. In order to emission to work, this box has to be ticked. Emission will overtake albedo if you pump up it high enough. We can choose whatever color we want this light to be. Emissive material has a global illumination parameter and can be set to real-time or baked. In order to bake lightning, we need to make sure that we set up our objects correctly. So by setting objects to static, that's telling the Unity that these objects are never going to move and so it can calculate all the indirect lighting on them and the shadows properly and back those into a light map. Sometimes the reason why objects may not looking good after light baking is because it needs to tick generate light map UV option located in the model import settings. 
The lightning panel can be found by going under Window, Rendering, Lightning. In order to access these parameters, we need to create new light settings. Now I can access these parameters. Lightning mode. With Bake Indirect, mixed lights behave like real-time lights, with the additional benefit of baking indirect lightning into light maps. Game objects lit by mixed lights cast real-time shadows. Similar to Baked Indirect, Shadow Mask Lightning Mode combines real-time direct lightning with Baked Indirect Lightning. However, Shadow Mask Lightning Mode differs from Baked Indirect Lightning Mode in the way that it renders shadow. Shadow Mask Lightning Mode allows Unity to combine baked and real-time shadows at runtime and to render shadows in the far distance. Shadow Mask Lightning Mode provides the highest fidelity shadows but has the highest performance cost and memory requirements. It is suitable for rendering realistic scenes where distant game objects are visible, such as open worlds on high-end or mid-range hardware. In subtractive lightning mode, all mixed lights in your scene provide baked direct and indirect lightning. Unity bakes shadow cast by static game objects into the light maps. In addition to the baked shadows, one directional light, known as the main directional light, provides real-time shadows for dynamic game objects. Subtractive lightning mode is useful on low-end hardware, where performance is a concern and where you need only one real-time shadow casting light. Light mapper. There are three options – CPU, GPU and Enlighten. GPU is faster and it's used to preview light map. CPU is much slower and precise. It used for baking the final light map of your scene. Enlighten is used for backwards compatibility. It is not recommended to use Enlighten in new projects, so we won't be covering that. Progressive updates. Prioritize scene view when baking light map. Multiple important samples. This generally leads to a faster convergence when generating light maps, but can lead to noisier results in certain low frequency environments. Direct samples. Increasing this value can improve the quality of light maps, but increases the baking time. Indirect samples. This setting controls the number of samples light mapper uses for indirect lighting calculations. For outdoor scenes, 100 samples should be enough. For indoor scenes with emissive geometry, increase the value until you see the result you want. Higher values also increase the time it takes to bake them. Environment Samples The Environment Samples property determines the total number of environment rays that Unity fires toward the skybox to gather light directly. Higher values might yield smoother results, but at the cost of increased bake times. Light Probe Sample Multiplier Controls how many samples are used for light probes as a multiplier of the sample values above. Higher values improve the quality of the light props, but they will take longer to bake. Minimum and maximum bounces, as the name implies, are used to set minimum and maximum number of bounces that you want to include in indirect lightning calculations. Each bounce increases the resources needed to bake your scene. Filtering has three options. None. Select this to use no filter or denoising for the light map. Auto. Select this to use a platform dependent preset for post processing the light map. Advanced is used to manually configure options for each type of light map target. Light map resolution. Use this to specify the number of texels per unit to use for light maps. Increasing this value improves light map quality. Light map padding. Use this to specify the separation between separate shapes in the baked light map. Light map size. The size in pixels of the full light map texture, which incorporates separate regions for the individual game object textures. Compressed light maps. A compressed light map requires less storage space, but the compression process can introduce unwanted visual effects into the texture. Ambient occlusion. 
Tick this checkbox to open a group of settings, which allow you to control the relative brightness of surfaces in ambient occlusion. Higher values indicate a greater contrast between the occluded and fully lit areas. This only applies to the indirect lighting calculated by the GI system. Maximum distance. A larger value produces longer rays and contributes more shadows to the light map, while a smaller value produces shorter rays that contribute shadows only when objects are very close to each other. Indirect contribution used to scale the brightness of indirect light as seen in the final light map. Direct contribution It is used to scale the brightness of direct light map. Directional mode In directional mode, Unity generates a second light map to store the dominant direction of the incoming light. This allows diffuse normal mapped materials to work with the GI. Directional mode requires about twice as much storage space for the additional light map data. Non-directional mode disables Unity's ability to generate a second light map to store the dominant direction of the incoming light. Albedo boost used to control the amount of light Unity bounces between surfaces. Increasing this draws the albedo wallet towards white for indirect light computation. Indirect intensity control the brightness of indirect light stored in real-time and baked light maps. Light map parameters For testing purposes, it's recommended to use low or medium presets. And for the final bake, use high resolution parameter. Light probes act as a grid of points, with each sampling the lights from different positions in your scene. Then, cast that lighting information on dynamic objects in your scene. Light probes come at a low performance cost and should be used despite which platform your game is targeted for. Reflection probes Reflection probes will sample the area around and create a cube map and apply that to any reflective materials within its volume. Unity can use Skybox material to generate ambient lighting in your scene. If your Skybox includes a sun, moon or other light in it, set up a directional light that points in the same direction as the light. This makes it appear as though the light in your Skybox creates shadows in your scene. We hope this video helps you get started building light maps for your scene and helps you create fast and beautiful lightning in your game. Mixel Studio provides more than 200 of Unity assets, so you can find almost everything, something that will suit your project. But if you need something specific, an original prop, building or character, or maybe something else, feel free to email us. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.